What's up everyone and welcome to another Fast Friday. My name is Kyler Holland and today I'm going to show you how to match color when you are shooting in different lighting scenarios, different color temperatures, and overall different scenes. It's pretty simple and easy to do within Premiere Pro, so let's just jump into it. So I want to draw your attention to these two clips. The one on the left is the ungraded footage from my a7S III shot in S-Log3, and the one on the right is the graded footage. I want you to pay attention to the one on the left and how every single scene is different in terms of exposure and color temperature, and overall an entirely different environment. But if you look at the one on the right, it looks like it is coherent in colors and exposure. So I'm going to show you how to do that within Premiere Pro. So this is the a7s3 footage and it's pretty flat so in order to get this to a more natural look obviously you have to add contrast decrease the highlights decrease the shadows and maybe change your exposure a little bit so that you can get to a more usable starting point however i've already created an input lut that i like using so i'm just going to drag that on the adjustment layer over my clips this will basically make it so that my footage has a good starting point but how do i match all of these clips so for example this first clip looks normal this one looks a little cool this one looks medium this one's pretty warm and this one's just cool and really dark so i'm going to show you how for starters you need to understand that when you are color grading, always look at your Lumetri scopes here on the left hand side. I'm in the color tab. If you don't see Lumetri scopes, go to window and check Lumetri scopes. And I like looking at the waveform RGB. We need to adjust each individual clip. You have to select a value that you like the look of. I found that I like my blacks to be around five and my whites to be around 90 or 95. What's the difference between whites, blacks, and highlights and shadows? Well, highlights will control a vast majority of all of your highlights and the whites will actually control the brightest portions of your highlights. And the same goes for the shadows. The shadows, if you drag that all the way to the left, it'll control a higher range of your shadows and the blacks will control just the darkest portions of your shadows. So what I like to do first is control my highlights and shadows. I'm gonna drag my highlights down a little bit because I know they're pretty high up there towards the top. And then I'm also gonna drag my whites down a little bit because I like to keep that range within 95. And then again for shadows, I'm gonna drag my shadows up a little bit. And then my blacks, I'm gonna drag them down a little bit because I like the darkest portion to be around five. Now I'm gonna go through each clip and make sure the clip is selected and do this for all of those clips. So for this one, I can see that I'm all the way to the top. So I'm gonna drag my highlights down a little bit. And then I'm gonna drag my shadows up a little bit. And then my blacks are touching zero. So I'm gonna drag my blacks up till that gets around five. Drag my whites to the left a little bit so that my highest portion is around 95. I'm gonna drag my blacks down to get to that point right there. And I'm gonna drag my highlights down a little bit and then my whites down as well because I want to keep in that 95 and five range. So for this clip, obviously it's overexposed. So I'm gonna decrease my exposure a little bit and then increase those highlights till I get into that 95 range. And I also need to decrease my shadows. And I'm gonna increase my black floor real quick because that is pretty low and increase my highlights again, just to get those up a little bit higher. Now for this one, we need to increase our exposure to create our Lumetri scope to get it up to our standards. And just by increasing our exposure, we're already there. Now on this one, again, we need to increase our exposure. And click on this clip, obviously it's pretty dark. So let's increase our exposure again on this one. And then once we increase our exposure, our black floor is pretty low. So let's increase that to around five. So now that we have controlled the exposure, now we need to control the color temperature. So click on a clip, and if you don't have anything white in your image, you will have to do this by eye. I have a white hoodie on, so I can click the white balance selector and select on my hoodie. But I'm gonna do this entire thing by eye. Increase my color temperature a little bit so it's a little bit warmer, and then go to my next clip, and again, just increase my color temperature till it looks good, or you can click on something white in your image. I'm gonna do this all by eye, just to show you that you do not need um, a white shirt or something to get this effect to work. So I'm going clip by clip and I'm adjusting my color temperature to get each clip to match. For example, this clip is really cool. So if I just increase that uh, white balance a little bit, it adds that warmth in there. That is the overall look that I'm going for. So that looks good. And then go back to this one, increase that 
white balance so it's a little bit warmer and on the final one increase that white balance so now if we play this back you can see that every single clip will match when you transition and it will have the same color that you are going for from here you can add your own LUTs and you can grade this even further but now you have a natural starting point that helps blend different transitions and scenes for example that scene was really warm and we're going into the salt flats which are really white but every single scene is matching and that's the basis of this tutorial well that's pretty much it all you have to do is adjust your exposure values and then adjust the color temperature for each clip and then you're rolling. So if you enjoyed today's video, click that like button. If you didn't, let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, subscribe if you're new because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. I'll see you next time.